Uh, today I wanted to talk to you a little bit just some of the common questions that we get when people call in or have questions about the infrax, interferential tinge units, muscle stimulators, so on and so forth. And generally, most of the time you're here, Linda in our office. Linda is extremely knowledgeable on these things. She's very knowledgeable on how to operate the units as well as the electrodes. And I've asked Jeff, our videographer here, to uh, pop some of the questions to us that you probably have because these are some of the most common questions we have. And I wanted to go what we hear, so I wanted to give you some answers in case you were having the similar questions. And besides that, Jeff's got that melodic beautiful voice that I don't have. Take it away, stud right, bolt. <laughs> so the first question is, why is it important to generally use larger electrodes when using interferential mode versus TENS on the infrax? Yeah, good question. One of the things that happens, a TENS unit, because it's only going off and on 150 times a second, that's called pulse, PPS, frequency, rate, all those terms mean the same thing. How many times the machine going off and on? With a TENS unit, typically it's 150 times at the most. With interferential, it's 8,000 to 8,150. So the reason we use a larger electrode is there's more energy coming through. And if you try to put it in a small area, that becomes painful. That actually hurts. It feels like a pen sticking in you. If you're spread it out, it gets smooth and feels good. That's the reason we use the larger electrodes. Now, the other side of that is, unlike a TENS unit, where you may wear the electrode 24-7 with interferential, you're only treating generally from 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes most times. So you really don't go through electrodes anywhere near as rapidly as you would with the TENS unit when you're using interferential. Okay, next question. Are you trying to treat pain with the infrax unit? Great question. And we and this is one of the most confusing things we have with patients. Ideally, especially now that we have interferential, we don't want to treat pain. We want to prevent pain. That's a key. When you're using a TENS unit, most of the time you're using it because you're in pain. A lot of times when you turn off the TENS part, pain comes back. With interferential, because of carryover, you can actually treat if you're in a pain situation and then go pain free. But many, some of you may have migraine headaches. This is a typical thing. A lot of times you have these precursors or you start doing an activity you know you're going to be hurting. That's when we want to intervene. The migraine headache patient, many times there's a tenseness here. They're, they're beginning to get tighter. They feel, uh-oh, here comes a migraine. That's when we want to treat. We don't want to start pain. We want to stop pain. And that's what we're trying to do with interferential now, is prevent you from having pain. It takes time. We have to work it. But that's our goal, because with carryover pain relief, you may not have to use the, the infrax unit, but you may start off using it five, six times a day, the first two or three days. And we get four, three, four weeks down the road, you may honestly only use the thing once a week in a month. And that's because we've developed the process of preventing the onset of pain. All right. Uh, next question. Why is it important to get the Infrax or TENS unit on record as being purchased with an insurance company? Yeah, that is one we hear all the time. And there's one main reason. Even Medicare, and we happen to be in North Carolina, Medicaid, almost all insurance companies. It's one thing to have a unit, but you have to have the supplies that are necessary to use the unit. If you don't have it on your insurance, then those supplies are not covered. That's out-of-pocket cost. And so that's one of the things we encourage. Now, even if you have a big deductible, be sure to save the receipt to show to the insurance company the money that your deductible went to was for the purchase of a TENS unit. Now, that should qualify you for the accessories. And accessories can be electrodes, batteries, cables, rechargeable battery system if you need it. For Medicare and Medicaid here in North Carolina, that includes topical pain things like Tiger Bomb patches, Biofreeze, Sombra, DMSO, uh, skin products. All of that's covered. But you've got to have a record in your insurance that you have a TENS or interferential machine. Okay, so will my insurance pay for it is often the first question, but really it should be the second question. Absolutely. Right? That's exactly, Jeff. And this, is, and this is one of the most difficult things to understand because 99.9% .9 of the patients that call us 
and want to try the unit to see it can help them, their immediate concern is how do I pay for it? And I will tell you, point blank, the answer we always give back, and this is why we have the policy, no deserving patient shall go without our equipment due to lack of funds. If the machine doesn't help you, if you're using the infrax and you're using it on pins or using it on interferential mode, but it's not helping you, you don't need to worry about insurance. There's no reason to buy something you don't need, nor is it any reason for the insurance to pay for it. The first thing that matters is, does it help you? If it helps you, believe you me, the folks here at MedFax will work hard to make sure that we do everything we possibly can to make sure that you're able to get the piece of equipment. In almost all situations, uh, the Infrex, especially TENS units, they're literally classified as durable medical equipment, DME. And what DME can be, it can be a hospital bed, it can be a wheelchair, it can be a scooter sometimes, it can be potty seats, blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's durable medical equipment. So if you have a contract that provides for durable medical equipment, in almost all the situations it's covered. I can tell you specifically Medicare Medicaid, uh, TENS units have been covered for years. Uh, but it's not important. First thing is it's got to help you. Then we get to the insurance question. Oh, incidentally, and I'll do it before Jeff says anything this time, and Jeff's working on it right now, we will have, by the time you see this video, an actual form on our website that you can actually put in your insurance information if you'd like to know. That'll come to us, and we'll actually call and check and find out up front uh, whether your insurance would pay for it or not. But again, I'm just telling that we put that there because customers are so concerned. But the real thing we're trying to do is let you try the unit, see if it helps you. And then we move to step two. Will my insurance pay for it? Okay, great answer. So the last question, why use 8,000 pulses per second? Right. And this is the distinguishing thing. Interferential is the most used form of electrotherapy inside the clinic since 1953. Interferential has been used for a long time. And it has proven very effective in chronic pain situations inside clinics pain clinics, hospitals. The original thing about pulses per second, and all pulses per second is rate frequency. Machines coming off and on. That's the reason with the infrax we have you plug it in the wall. We need unlimited power supply because you're pulling out a lot. Now the problem we've had with portable interferential since I think this project started about 1980, the problem was when you're pulling out a lot of energy you got to have something to pull it from, and you needed a battery source. Well, with interferential pulling out that much energy, you literally need a wheelbarrow with car batteries in it. And now it's not even portable because you're hurting so bad pushing the wheelbarrow around with the batteries. It's only since January 2009 that, like on our Infrax unit, you can get 80 minutes on the rechargeable batteries. But that's Rechargeable batteries are intended to be used when you're in a car, an airplane. It's always intended to be plugged in so that we can draw as much energy as we need to render an effective treatment. The reason you're doing multiple pulses per second is as you increase the frequency, that decreases the resistance of the skin. Now, some of you may have seen some articles we've written about where people take what are called dorsal column stimulators. All it is, you take two wires, and you stick them near the spine, and now you can get near the nerve root, and you can stimulate that. The reason for sticking them inside your body is because now you've reduced the resistance. At this point, the ends of the wires are actually surrounded by tissue and moisture. Remember, electricity loves moisture. And so now, with surgery, very expensive, scar tissue is an issue. Uh, now they've reduced the resistance. They can stimulate their target area. That's what interferential is about. The reason we do pulses per second so rapidly is so that we can break through the barriers of resistance and get to our targets, target nerves. Now, in so doing this, is there any magic to 8,000 pulses per second? No. Would 4,000 pulses per second do as well? Probably not. Would 12,000 pulses per second do better Maybe a little bit, but one of the things that's been shown is that 8,000 pulses per second in that range, 
you're doing a pretty doggone good job of reducing the resistance. That's the reason for using higher frequency or pulses per second. That's the reason interferential works so well in short treatment periods is because we've reduced the resistance and now we can go right at what we're targeting. You can't do that with TENS. TENS doesn't, resistance is a big factor there. So that's the reason for going 8,000 pulses per second. Thanks for watching. I hope this answers some of your questions. If you've got any more, just send me an email or pick up the phone call and see if we can't help you on that. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff.